Hi there, my name is Kenrick, and welcome to another ENFP male interview. Today, I get to interview John. So, John, welcome, man. Hey, what's up? What's up? Very happy to be here. Very. So, John, uh, can you tell us what your full type is? All right, I am INFP, consume, play, blast, sleep, double feminine. So, you are the one of the most extroverted INFP types. That's uh, right, I'm jacked. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you feel about you know? Um, I was actually. Uh, I was actually talking with my other type twin, actually. You actually interviewed her, forgot her name. But um, I was talking to her, uh, she reached out to me the other day. And um, so, and I was, she was like, uh, how does it feel getting your typing? And I was like, this year has been so terrible for me. And this has probably been like the best thing that has happened to me all year. <laughs> it's getting this typing. Um, I actually, the funny thing is that um, everyone thought, like, because here's the thing um i have been like crackhead obsessed with mbti ever since like the age of like 16 like back in 2013 so i have I, like i've always thought of myself as like and well maybe not technically always but for the majority of my time knowing mbti i've always thought of myself as an infp but then when i got into ops um the, the it's sort of like i was learning about like the, the functions and they're kind of like a little bit different in comparison to the uh regular sort of mbti that kind of thing and um so i was i was looking at inferior si and i was like oh this might be what i might actually be but um everyone everyone else was saying like because i was going to like the disc the, the the discord groups i was going to facebook i was doing all that kind of thing and um everyone was saying oh yeah like observe or like like there like there are some people who said i was infp but most people said that I was, um, most people said I was masculine sensing. Most people said I was NEFI. And most people, like everyone, now here's the thing, everyone, because I, I uploaded my typing video to the group and ever like, and nobody said I was Savior Blast. So that was, that was like an indication. Most people said I was consume play or play consume, something like that. Um, like the general consensus was that I was a mas masculine sensing feminine deciding any FI consume play sleep blast. But this is actually but the, the official type that I got was actually very interesting because it actually explains the overactivated extrovert intuition that I felt that what made me think that, that I was actually an observer in oh yes. But but what's actually um interesting is that like because usually what happens. In, o, like, in OPS that people type themselves upside down, but I'm one of the people that didn't type. Well, I mean, I type myself as like NEFI and OPS. So maybe like it might technically wrong. Yeah. But like, but in traditional MBTI, like I've always seen myself as INFP and like, it's, I, I like how I'm like one of those people that didn't type themselves upside down just due to like the knowledge of the cognitive functions. So yeah. Sweet man, that's uh that's awesome that you you know you weren't the, one of the individuals that type yourself upside down and <laughs> you know uh, I mean even if you type yourself as an ENFP you used to be the OPS system like you weren't too far off right so no uh, no yeah um cool man I I mean when I when I got typed myself I I I've always seen myself as ENFP also in the regular MBTI and then when I got officially typed I was an ENFP the the my, the biggest surprise was like I was an NET I was like oh what the hell you know so. <laughs> So, so for you, I guess, were you surprised that you are the most extroverted, like INFP type? Um, no, actually, well, no, but because here's the thing, like, um, back when I was like in secondary school, I had a lot of social anxiety, and I it was very hard for me to like make a group of friends. In fact, I don't even really have a a group of friends uh, that are actually from my second school in fact the only group of friends I really have are like the ones I went to in primary school because like I went to like a primary school for like special needs children so like I was I, like it was easier for me to to mix with autistic people as opposed to neurotypical people and so like I remember like when we went like recently we went to like a sort of freshers gathering because like I'm repeating first year in college so like we went to like a freshers gathering and one of the, I was just like, at one point I was just like standing there, I was kind of looking lost. And one of the new friends I made was like, oh, you look very, you look very lost. Yeah, right. And I'm like, yeah, of course. But like, I was just like to myself, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to sit down and just like, cause I, 
like I think one of the things that sort of kind of uh broke me out of my shell like this was probably back in like April 2015 I'd say it was like well, like the at the time like the head of special needs was like he he kind of he was like very open-minded he was kind of like all that kind of stuff and he took me like he sort of because I was sort of kind of like living a lifestyle where I was basically doing like the same stuff like over and over and it was like I it was kind of like because secondary school life I, I really didn't like it but um he was like well do you know what this, this is this is the where, like he he basically brought me to like different sort of like colleges not colleges but he, he he did that and um he was like oh yeah this is the experience that you could have and I was like what well, was very interesting what maybe like sort of uh, like sort of opened my shell up in that sense was kind of like not only was I being brought out into like different experiences experiences outside of myself but it was also like um because, like he was telling me people like people don't care what they think of you like you like because I, re I remember there was like a jogger just like running up and he he just did hi to the jogger and like just in front of his face and I had to I remember just kept having having to tell myself people don't care people don't care people don't care I kept having to repeat that mantra to myself in order to have to stop caring about what people thought of me that, that that was super super important that that probably I suppose maybe that sort of psychological development maybe helped me kind of become more extroverted um but I'm not I'm not, I'm not I don't I don't know because I, I don't know what I would have been like if I turned out into like a public secondary school I, or like if I was raised in the countryside with little to no like social interaction I don't, I don't know I might have been much more maybe I would have come across as like more awkward in social interaction therefore maybe that would have influenced my type I'm not really too sure but not INFP but like more like the animal sex maybe um okay a few things that I got from that that little um spiel that you had is uh, first is uh, definitely definitely decider talk you know like that person and me and that person and me so I'm like okay yeah definitely lots of decider talk uh but the other thing also was uh you're very info dominant like you you're like you know making sure that the story is accurate and you're like bringing up like facts um so yeah. let's let's start with that let's talk about being info dominant so talk about your obsession with like accuracy of information and you know this that's actually a very interesting thing because um because i actually thought in ops i was last last because i actually have a terrible time at like actually starting like because i'm i'm a folk singer songwriter i'm a musician but i have a terrible i i haven't even started anything that's why i thought i was blast last because oh, i'm so bad at starting anything but i would when i actually got my type back and i was like looking through like okay well because i don't i didn't really know much about info dominant energy down but i looked through that and i was like okay that's actually true because like I've always like because and, and, and I actually thought this is probably why I thought I was like masculine sensing as well because I'm very good at like dates for example I for example I'd be like oh yeah back in April 2015 oh yeah back on May 12th like you know oh 11 p.m like that kind of thing I know that kind of stuff and I I think I would have seen that as masculine sensing but I think yeah like in, like info dominant that's that probably actually explains like why I got blast third in my type. I'm, I'm essentially like a blast third. So, cause it's like, I'm bad at like actually starting stuff, but in terms of like actually putting uh, like bouncing information, like in, in a conversation, that seems to be something that I'm actually pretty good at. And like, and I remember actually telling my, like telling myself, you know, once I get my type, I'm going to look for all of my type twins and all the people who are like completely opposite me. Cause I think like my complete opposite type is uh double masculine estj blast sleep consume play and i'm not and i'm and i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about like direct options in terms of like you know uh, i'm not like i'm not talking about like cognitive functions or anything like that i'm just talking about like if they're flipped like that kind of thing so yeah yeah it also makes sense why your blast would not be uh that good because it's also double feminine so um, let's, we're, we're, since we're not topic already, let's talk about your double feminine blast. So your double feminine blast is S I T E. Um, it's third, so technically you have access to it. But because it's double feminine, it's gonna be like a fart gas. It's like what they call it. <laughs> so um, let's talk about like uh, you know, it's, it's also facts, right? So uh, you, you, like you said, you can recall dates and stuff, which you thought was uh, masculine S I. But it, I mean, info dominant people can also do that even if they're double feminine, which I've soon realized, uh, re just recently realized. <laughs> um, but but so let's let's start with that. let's let's uh, cover a different part. So first, how do you re how do you recall the numbers and dates? Like, are you seeing a visual of it because you you are like double feminine, or 
are you just good with numbers? Um, well, actually, um, there is this kind of like sort of, what's actually very interesting is that if you look at it, like this, this probably doesn't answer the question, but like if, say, for example, if you look at a clock, I would like consider the years, like, for example, like 2001 being like at the one point on the clock and 2009 being like on the very left side of the clock. And then after when it goes to 12, then, you know, once it goes to like, like say, for example, like, I don't know, 1913, 1914, it goes in a straight line. And what's actually very interesting is that um, for the years, it's like, you know, 1970, 1980, it's like, it's like a sort of descending kind of thing. And, but it's like, it's, all, it's like, say for example, 1990 for like, would be like on the very left, this, this will probably be like your, I don't know if it's your left or your right, but it's my left. And like 1999, for example, is all the way on the right. And it's like, and it's like, there is like a sort of like a kind of, and what's actually very interesting is that like, I think, I think like, for example, there is also pictures in my head dedicated to like maybe certain months of the year, but this would have been like maybe when I was a child looking back on like maybe a calendar and I sort of picked up that image and then maybe it stayed with me. So I think that's, yeah, but it is, but it's actually, it's, it's very funny. It's because like, it's like my blast is like third. So it's like, a, it's like, I'm good at like relaying the information. It's like, I'm good at sharing information, but because it's double feminine, it's like, it's probably like a case where I like I'm fe I I feel like I'm good at it, but if in that actual like double double masculine blast ESTJ like actually tried to like prod me on it, I probably wouldn't be too good because it, it like it's it's probably like that kind of thing. I'm not really too sure, but um, yeah. All right, I mean, how you explain that clock stuff? That's definitely very visual because I can't do that. So I'm like, okay, it's <laughs> definitely uh definitely a visual a visual thing that you're, you're doing there um all right um what about that so it's st right so it's facts so how are you with facts and and whatnot like do, do you do you like to provide facts um when you are discussing things with people because um you know it is it is third so you know you, you you're it's it's a hobby animal essentially so yeah 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 because, yeah because like because like si is a sort of recreational um Fun like function and for like INFPs because it's third. So um I I mean it depends. It's like my sort of style of communication. It's like I'm not like always like factual, for example. It's like I don't like to talk in facts all the time. I don't like to talk about because like I would I like I prefer like kind of like conceptual communication, but like conceptual communication that's true or what I feel is true anyway. So it's so like like I do, I do, I do definitely like agree with the whole hippie, hippie talk kind of NF stuff. I think that's definitely, definitely me. Um, at the same, at the same time though, it's like, like, I suppose like maybe where the blast comes in is like, when I do talk like NF hippie, hippie talk, it's not like, it's not like pure theory. Like I'm not, it's not really like more or less talking about it just for the, there's always like kind of like a sort of deeper purpose Cause it's like when I'm like sharing information with someone and it may sound conceptual, it may sound hippie, but I always, at the same time, I always kind of feel like not only is it important for it, for me to say, so I take like a certain level of accountability, but the other person hears it. So they ultimately learn the information. Maybe that's where, like, the, maybe that's how the blast actually works. Cause it's like, I pick up something with my consume. It sounds like a very good idea, uh, but, but like I've consumed it enough. And then I sort of blast, like I blast it out. I was like, oh yeah, cause, cause I've actually like, cause, cause now I actually think about it, I've definitely blasted a lot of stuff that, that I have like consumed, but it's like, <laughs> it's funny because like people wouldn't really like really understand it. So, um, is it like a case where like, I mean, yeah, like I do prefer to be like factual in communication, but I'm not like, so there, <laughs> I suppose it like, I'm not too like hung up on it per se. Like may maybe in like certain situations I might be, but I I'm not really too sure about that though. It depends. I like your sleep. I like how your sleep processing right now. <laughs> You're trying to yeah. Uh, sleep, yeah, sleep last. last, which we'll all cover a sleep last thing later, but um, that's funny. <laughs> um, so a few, a few comments on um, just a, the, the whole thing that you just said, like uh, just, just now is first you would channel change a lot. So yeah. definitely, definitely the, the NE um, is, is channel changing uh, pretty aggressively. Um, second, yeah. I think what you're trying to say earlier was like, you, you said you'd like to talk conceptually, right? But, but 
but in there's also some form of reality with it. So I feel like that's you double observing. Like you're not mm-hmm. going all in like crazy intuition land. Like you do back <laughs> it up with with facts. Uh, and I, again, you're also info dominant, right? So you'll talk about the con- that, the concept, and then you'll back it up with with facts. So it's like yeah, it's it's not it, you're like you have breaks before it goes to crazy land, right? It's it's like you know yeah, you're still yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Because like I call honestly, like I have two like really best friends, and they just like 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 i say i'm just, i'm getting now i'm just guessing the types but like i, I mean i think they're both intuitors but i think they've got like maybe no there's actually one who i feel like has got like masculine se- sensing but it's probably like third he's probably more like intp i think i'm not I, I could be totally wrong but like um it's like they kind of they talk like pure stupid like pure, pure conceptual stupid and it's like that's cool and all but like Mm, I like meaningful. I like, I, you see, I like, I like, you see, I like conversations about like, like you've probably heard of like Leo Gura from actualize.org. I love those kind of like conversations, which go into like really deep things about like spirituality and like mindfulness and that. And um, like, well, actually, well, mindfulness is like an essential part of health in my opinion, but like going into um, like self-actualization, like, um, going into like the importance of meditation going like reaching sort of higher planes of con- I'm now that that's stuff I'm really interested in but if people just talk like like they're, they're, stu- they're just stupid like when I say conceptual like I'm, I'm talking about stuff that's like not in reality and that's okay but if it doesn't lead anywhere in terms of like like sort of contributing to like the, the the health of the universe that kind of thing if this is if this discussion doesn't contribute to health of the universe and is in fact bringing it down i don't like that that's I, like the, i think maybe my intuition comes from like wanting to have discussions about like say for example about spiral dynamics and talking about all that's in like turquoise and all that kind of stuff and like because that's the kind of stuff that i, I really i really matters to me and also like mbti kind of uh, stuff as well but it's like it's like i i'm i suppose i'm not really too much of a fan of like going into like for example just trying to logically back up my points and then just spit out like facts as, about like theoretical information that's supposed to like plead mentally please like certain people i, I it's it's like you know like intellectual debates and so like it's interesting but like i don't know i just try to talk about like you know what leo, like what leo gura talks about just like the whole because i was obsessed with like actualize.org at, at like one point um and the it was like i think it's just really important to find people in your life who look out for your health and who want really want the best for you and who like sort of push you in like the right direction or who, or who pushing you in the sense that they're trying to like help you for the best and it's, it's kind of weird because like most people like because like you may feel that they, they don't really have your best interest at heart but you kind of like have to sort of look at where they're pushing it's like you know you have to sort of analyze a sort of you could use like a sort of framework like for example maybe spiral dynamics or something like that and you, you could be like okay where is this person's consciousness co- coming from is it coming from like the orange where there's like money sex and luxury if the, no is it is it green okay that's a bit better than yellow and then turquoise and it's like you always you like that, but it's kind of as at the same time spiral dynamics is kind of weird though because like i mean it's not weird but like it's a lot of people are trying to be like oh yeah i want to be turquoise and spiral dynamics when they haven't even like you know they're still stuck in orange or they're still stuck in blue or red or something like that and it's like they've got to like conquer that they just got to see the stupid habits that they're engaging with then they have to keep going. Then, then they can just keep keep going up and up. And what people are missing out on is that things like this take patience and time and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just talking about the most important kind of stuff. Like for example, like climate change and like you know, I mean, not being dogmatic. I mean, you've got to like remove dogma and ideology, but just talk about the things that are the most important in this world without being toxic about it. You like you know, you've got to approach every. Like you've got to approach life with like love, empathy, compassion, kindness, all that sort of stuff. You've got to like be, be open minded. You've got to have like very good perspectives. You've got to be spiritual. You've got to like tap. You've got to tap into yourself, like through meditation and mindfulness, and 
even have like spontaneity in your life as well but um yeah <laughs> like like the kind of alan watts kind of eckhart tolle kind of stuff like that that's fascinating to me like all that kind of conceptual talk, talk i would love to have that like all day long but if it's like the kind of conceptual talk that just doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't like lead to the progression of human development i i i don't like that not at all all right, there was a there, there was a lot of uh, channel changing there, uh, but this, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I I feel like what you were trying to say is like people are skipping steps essentially instead of like yeah they're they're trying to like an easy way out. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I think I guess you were kind of describing. I mean, you 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 were talking about the different system, but I guess Maslow's hierarchy of needs is pretty much like yeah an yeah example of it. And yeah, it, you know, you're jumping into the self actualization when you haven't had your basic needs met yet. You know, so it's like yeah 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 that's it yeah. Yeah, um, I feel like where that kind of talk that you're kind of talking about is not going anywhere. I think that would be like a, a typical NEFI ENFP having a conversation with like an, you know, NIFE INFJ. They're, they're, just, they're just in crazy <laughs> NF land, but like there's no no breaks and, and it's, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. So I feel like, yeah, okay, that's not, that's also not as good, you know? Um, yeah, cause it, yeah, because like, if, 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 cause if, the, if you know, if one person's like, oh man, like, you know, this, this ism, like, for example, this socialism, feminism is so bad, and then we need to dissect and dissect and analyze how it's so bad, and, all that kind of, and then this per- and then this person's like, no, we need to dissect and analyze how it's really good, and all that kind of, and it's like, they're, they're like, ideologically clashing, it's like, politics, politics, more politics, and it's like, uh, theory, 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 that doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Now, in, now, in saying that, what bores me even more than that is, like, people, who, who are just straight facts it's like you know you, you I, I go into work at 9 a.m at 10 a.m i have my brunch at 12 a.m i have my lunch at one at one at 1 p.m i do where i work out at 3 p.m i do this yeah. oh oh would you look at the time oh i have um like <laughs> like that kind of thing it's like that's it's like like i mean small talk i think is necessary for building relationships but it, but you know if, if, if every single conversation with one person is like, oh, the traffic was so bad. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, uh, and like, more small. Oh, how was the, oh, did you see the game last night? Oh, how was the, oh, oh the weather's so bad. Like, like that kind of, no. That's, that, that's worse than going into pure theory land. I'd rather go into pure theory land and go nowhere than, than just be constantly engaged, like constantly engaged with one person at the weather or, or, or the game. Right. Okay, that's funny. Uh... <laughs> Because I think I think a double uh, a single observer would enjoy that other conversation, but uh, <laughs> but I I also feel like yes that I think the essay report is probably the worst to to listen to uh, all day. And then the conceptual theory would be next. Um, I'm okay with small talk; it doesn't bother me. I think it's fine. I think it's necessary. Well, I mean, no, small talk in itself is is like good, yeah. but it's like yeah. you you've got to bridge into better things after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I get, I get. You're gonna need to pivot. I get, I get. I get yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's just lame. But uh, let's. <laughs> um all right cool i yeah i like how you added uh, so so i like how you're kind of making fun of the double or the double the 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 single observers here so you know because they they don't have the breaks and stuff so let's let's talk about where you're stuck you're stuck with with people but your your type is weird because it's like double activated te right so um that's surprising you're you're a glass lizard so essentially yes that's still gonna be the scary thing the tribe but because you have double activated te it's not gonna be like compared to the INFPs that you know don't have that double activity it's you're you're better off essentially yeah uh, so talk about uh, talk about where you're stuck like let's start with the, the first one tribe hate talk about the tribe hate thing. tribe hate okay tribe tribe hate. Hate. Yeah. Hmm. Tribe. well you see I've been raised in like a good like a good family a good family in the sense of like uh you know my parents provide me very well during my childhood I still live with my parents um but um it's kind of weird but look now the kind of relationship I have with my parents is kind of like usually like if I come home from like work I don't want to talk with them because <laughs> it's like oh John did you t- did you tidy up your room did you brush your teeth did you no hate that uh, I just hate because it's like and, and what's kind of weird is that it's like now I the kind of relationship I have with my parents is that they're doing parental things because it comes naturally to them and they've known me for 24 years but like, goddamn, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it feels weird knowing that like these people who have been with you for like the past 24 years know absolutely everything about you. And because of that, they kind of like 
think, oh yeah, you know, we're going to treat him like a child and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think like my sort of version of like how I could absolutely hate the tribe is if like the tribe is like being really forceful, like, no, you better go into law. You better do, or I won't help you. I'll disown you like that kind of thing. It's like, we, I will force you into this kind of thing. Like, no way. No, that's poisonous. That's toxic. I need to get out. Like, and that's, that's no what like, or it's like, you better follow our religious beliefs. You better follow our dogma. You better follow our lifestyle. You better do this, you better do that. And it's like, oh man, like that, that, that kind of thing. That's, that's, that's control. That's, that's, uh, that's toxic. That's poisonous. Um, but I think it's, if I were to be a, like a bit more specific regarding my situation, it's kind of like, <clears throat> cause it's like, I know for a fact that like my dad is like an IJ. He's probably like an, and because of that, he does like IJ stuff. It's like, and I think with my very chaotic kind of wiring, I, that he doesn't like that because, um, or like, yeah, I don't, that, that's where we've like been clashing for like years, basically, especially like probably over like the past 10 years. And, um, um, it's, it's kind of a thing where, um, I suppose people may, may like look at my type and, well, you will no, here's the thing. No, I'm, no, I'm a feminine decider. So I suppose like, like maybe, um, oh, so that means I'm like, I'm not as pushing the tribe. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a kind of a situation where, um, like I, I like my family. You could, I do have a, like deep down, I love my family, but it's like, I wish I had that kind of relationship where my family, where I could like, I could just talk to them. Like, for example, they're my friends or I could just talk to them as if they're like <laughs> people, because it's, it's funny. It's, 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 it's kind of childish really. Probably, probably is childish. It's just like, just kind of see my parents as still like parents. And I don't like that. Um, I suppose it's like a mental barrier in some way. And um, it's, it's, it's because I've always had this kind of thing, like, like for example, because I remember, um, I remember it was like raining uh, one night. It wasn't too bad, but still. And I was like, I, saw, I was still walking outside. I was still like getting my exercise. Then when I came in, it's like, but both of them were watching TV. They were sitting in the living room and I came in and they knew it was raining. So both of them came from the living room into the kitchen because I came into the kitchen. And the only reason why they both did this was like, oh, John, your clothes are wet. And I, and I knew they were doing this. It's like they, their parental mode had activated. And every time that activates, that, that, that gets activated, that always disturbs me because I don't like it when people are like, oh, hey, you're, this thing is this, that thing is that. You better fix this. You better fix that. It's like, um, it's obvious. I know. And you better respect my choice and whether I want to fix it or not. That's the thing. But no, they're parents. I mean, well, parents do, they're, they're parents do parent things. So it's like, oh, your clothes are wet. Oh, you better change this. You better change that. It's like, back off please respect me as an adult like it's like I kind of the kind of relationship I have with my parents right now to sort of summarize it is that I do love them but they get they could they better be very far away from me I love like I like I, I like to visit them maybe once a year I love I love my parents I do I, yeah <laughs> it's kind of weird um yeah it's just just as long as they're far away from me I don't feel comfortable living living near to them I think that I think that's it well, you live with them right now, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like your dad is an ISTJ of some sort, and uh, I think, well, I've always thought of him as like an INTJ because there's 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 a lot of like conceptual. Well, because he because there's a lot of like conceptual. He talks a lot of like conceptual stuff because I remember um, when I was um, I was thinking about whether to like drop out of college or to go live with my girlfriend, which is like a whole other story. Yeah. I'll get into eventually and um we can probably talk about that with the sleep processing but he was like oh you see John you there's like think of this thing as like a bridge and this is a very hard bridge to cross and but if you if you get the, the, the degree can be a bridge for you to cross to build a better life with your girlfriend and all that kind of stuff and that's like that's like the conceptual stuff he like talks about so that's why I'm thinking he's like INTD but he's definitely IJ there's like no doubt about that and I always clash with that it's possible, or he's like a glass lizard ISTJ. It could, <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, he could, he could be on it. Yeah, yeah like a blast, possible. like a blast play consume sleep one, like you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's hard, it's hard to say, you know. Um, <laughs> um, 
yeah those are tricky the glass lizards like you you guys are tricky because like, you know it's, <laughs> you, you look you look you look like one thing but you're something you're actually like another thing um, yeah yeah like yeah and it was yeah because i remember like just because i actually remember looking at my type on like i forgot his name but he built like this good website dedicated to ops and i was looking at my, looking at my specific type rob and technically yeah that's him and <laughs> um what i found out was that um uh my te even though it's inferior and it's supposed to be weaker than my si is actually like two percent stronger than my si and that's like weird but um I remember, like, my girlfriend, actually, we actually met for, uh, four years ago uh, in the INFP Facebook group. Do you, do you have an EJ uh, girlfriend? Because uh, you're No, I know. <laughs> no, she's INFP as well. But, um, yeah, have you, but has she been typed? Oh, sorry. Um, no, <laughs> she has not been. She's not been OPS typed. No, she hasn't. Um, I think, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, we met in... in uh, the yeah we met in the infp facebook group we're still long distance we, we're actually our fifth five-year anniversary is like approaching february and um yeah it's it's been like the best like it's what's actually very interesting is that um we actually initially like recorded our first ever sort of meetup uh which was back in 2017 so she i would have just turned 20 and she would have like just turned 18 so like we met up for like the first time that year and we had like we, we were like recording the process and I asked my dad for recording he did um and I remember like we she had like one of her friends edit the video and what's crazy is that I can actually show you this video later the video got frick, like freaking four million views wow and yeah and um but we unfortunately we could not monetize it because our friend put in like a copyrighted song Oh, like that. Yeah. So, like, if if we try to monetize it, it would go to the record company. So, that was that. Yeah, that was it. But I remember, like, one of the things about MBTI is that, like, first of all, I'd love to meet all my type twins. Absolutely, I bet it'd be a I bet it'd be a blast. And uh, I'd say yeah. I'd, I'd also love to meet uh, my polar opposites as well. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> You probably hate all your type twins. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think like I think well, I'm sort of I probably will, but well, no, nah, I, I don't. I, no, I'm gonna. I want to remain optimistic here. Um, <laughs> like and you're like this person is me. Oh God, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> <laughs> actually. Oh, oh, you say. Oh, you said. Oh, sorry, you said type twin. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I thought you meant like polar opposite. That's why I said. Oh, I probably no, no, will. No, like no, polar you. Opposite, like, you'll, you'll probably love your polar opposite, but your type twin. You'll be like, oh God, you're so embarrassing. You know, like, you know, like <laughs> oh no. Like, um, um, you see, what's what's kind of what's kind of been weird to me is that uh when I've actually like I've only met like yeah, one of uh one of my type twins, and it's like my brain has kind of been like, because they're the exact same type as me out of 512, I'm just gonna be like as open as possible. I'm not gonna like hide any secrets about myself, I'm not gonna be like closed or anything like that. Yeah. But, but I mean, at the same time, though, there's always this thing in the back of my mind, like, you know, what if Dave, Dave and Shan's type of them is wrong? But then the other part's like, well, you see, they know the OPS system better than you do. So like all that kind of stuff. But it's it's like at the same time, it's like a one in five twelve chance of being like the same type as me. So it's yeah, it is kind of like a sort of weird situation. But um yeah as I, like i i, I, I would like <laughs> maybe yeah it, it might be a, like for example i might notice like a slight sort of distinct in my sort of type twin and i'd be like what same person no way no no they're, they're no they've got freaking no if no they're a masculine designer they're told this person a total dick whereas like with my maybe with like my polar opposite it might like it could be like a case where, God, this guy's so boring. Or maybe it might be a case of, wow, this guy is like everything, basically everything, not everything I want to be, but like, you know, they've got like the mindset. If I adopted like a nugget of their brain, I'd be like in a better position or something like that. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's move on to your, let's talk about your FI, your masculine FI. Uh, All right. So this is going to be your savior um and uh this is you live in this land essentially 
yeah. how do you let's let's start with the, your values first your fi values uh, so fi values can you tell me your top five values all right um well i could talk about my goals but i will talk about my values. um music girlfriend this is not an order by the way so uh this yeah it's not an order music girlfriend self actualization this is this is probably the the, the third one's kind of something i'm value more conceptually maybe, maybe actually probably all my values are probably very conceptual um girlfriend music self self actualization is really like spiritual absolute highest point of human consciousness is probably my, my number one value um uh Hmm. Uh, I suppose whatever word encompasses love, kindness, compassion, empathy, all that, whatever word that is, that's number four. Um, MBTI and, and MBTI per Enneagram, per, uh, personality database, everything personality typology. That, that's, that's, that's like definitely my top, uh, top five. So music, girlfriend, uh, self actualization, uh, love, and uh mbti gotcha okay cool um <laughs> uh, I, I like how you were sleep processing there so it's like <laughs> it's, it's like you knew it but you had to like dig first because yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. It's, it's it's cool uh yeah definitely definitely you're definitely an interesting ip case because uh you know because yeah like, cause you, like you can tell I, I didn't actually just like to sit sit down and be like okay what are my top five values right That's right yeah, uh, yeah, it wasn't like you know in a snap you had to like think about it uh, in yeah. a moment, uh, which is which is super interesting because um, sleep is correlated with the IP type, right? So it, and you have it fourth, so it's it's interesting that it's yeah. it's your fourth. Um, it, it yeah. probably helps you a lot uh, as an IP because you know otherwise you would just be stuck in that you know that sleep loop. So you're not. So that, yeah. that's a good thing. Um, okay, let's let's uh, talk about um, you know self um, FI. So so. Yeah. You're not balanced with with uh, self and tribe essentially as an IP. Although you are the way, the most balanced compared to the, the other the other people like the other IPs. Um, do you feel like there's a lag time when you're switching between FI and TE? Do you feel like there's like a e even though it's double activated TE? Do you feel like there's like a the transition period is still difficult to to TE or do you feel like it's easy? Um, one person actually I, like I actually uh, posted my typing video and one person actually pointed out that me going from FT is actually very difficult and to be fair like it probably is like I suppose I think it probably is actually for me to actually communicate TE is actually probably very difficult like even okay like even if we're um like I suppose well no the definition of TE I think in, in regular MBTI is quite different from the definition of TE in OPS so I'm not going to use like the the traditional um definition of te because if i was then like that it that's like my biggest hurdle it's like my biggest demon um the whole thing of actually well well yeah let, let's use the traditional definition let's start easy um the whole thing of like me making goals and sticking to goals and tracking like everything by like like well yeah but like my, like well manually putting in like specific details and micro steps and all that kind of stuff and you know just basically like you know if, if I've got like a goal in mind but then you know I have to actually put in the work I have to like actually do it that's like the, the hardest part for me it's, it's, it's like the getting started thing that's why I thought it was blast last because like the getting started part is always the hardest one for me um because you, because in like traditional uh, MBTI TE people are like very goal oriented and they like, they, they know how to reach a certain goal specifically. Um, but of course that's like at the expense of their FI because what goal they're chasing might not lean in with what they value. But with me, like, I suppose it's like in traditional MBTI, it's like FI, it's like, they know what they want but it's how they get to what they want there, which is the hardest thing. So I think, but in OPS, it's kind of, it's, it's a different thing. Um, it's actually making, so it's making the, it's the, because the thing, the goal orientation thing I was talking about, that's actually more SI in OPS because you have to actually sort of track the, the specific progress that you're making with TE because TE is a deciding function. You make decisions based off of the reasons of the tribe. Um, 
the most I've like the only time I'd ever really use TE is like say for example if I'm like uh, like if I'm if I'm looking to like for example buy a new phone or buy a new new computer or buy like you know because because like I've re- I've gotten to like Magic the Gathering recently so sometimes for example I would look at like you know best deck or best phone or thing that has best specs or like you know like sort of, sort of rankings I'm really I've always re- been really into rankings like even like a, like um. I'd say my sixth value is like a human development index, like which was published by the UN. And like, I would look at like, you know, top countries by like the human development index and all that kind of stuff. And just, I suppose that's like the external reasons, basically. It's like, I, so maybe that's like where my TE actually like comes in, but at the same time, it's kind of like a more recreational thing. Like if I were to, like me actually, like me making decisions based off of tribe reasons is actually like in reality, that's actually a hard thing for me to do um because i think my like especially if it like contradicts my fi because um because it's it's because if i know that i want something and it's now it depends because like my, there's a sort of certain because like every function is like has strengths and weaknesses and so so i try to approach essentially i try to approach my te through my fi and it's like will this te thing be beneficial towards my fi and i know like um some things in te will like will work and i know i should act on them but i don't and then when te is like oh why don't you not act on these things it's like well you know you're right i mean please don't be a dick about it but okay you're right um whereas like whereas but the toxic te is like totally disregarding the personal body so it's like oh you better listen to us because this is right like that kind of thing like, our reasons are right like that kind of thing like no Nah, not, not, not for that at all. No, if like, because if there's like a situation where my FI is like basically screaming at this sort of TE thing, if it's if it's like, no, do not engage in this TE activity, I will not because I, I, I have a very good sense of it. But I'm very, it's, it's kind of a situation where I'm very aware of what the, my, 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 the TE that I do have is, is very aware of what my FI needs to do. Um, but, but it's like also and, and also actually it's, it's actually feminine as well so it's not actually I'm actually very gentle with people and this is this is something I've known throughout my whole life I'm very not pushy on people it's um because I remember I remember actually once I, th- I think like oh, like this is like probably seven years ago seven and a half years ago it's like we were on like some kind of skiing trip and I was like I remember I can't I don't remember the specific details, but I remember the teacher at one point called me a, pol- a like a very polite skier or a kind skier or something. I think he said polite skier because like I was like I suppose I always let someone have their way or something. Like that. I'm not really too sure, but um, um, I suppose I but, but but I remember seeing the OPS video, and I remember seeing Inferior as sorry and I'm thinking okay this is probably like my weakest function. Because I remember, like, someone else was, like, po- uh, pointing in the comments in my Facebook saying that I, like, like, I don't seem, ha- like, TE is, like, hard for me, but I don't seem to have, like, a hatred for it. And that's actually very interesting. Where um, SI and, like, the whole thing of, like, you know, discipline, organizing facts and, like, the maintenance, that's always been hard for me. Like, all through my life, that's always been hard. And I think that's why many people thought I was NEFI. But... The fact that it's it's not that I'm any FI, but it's more of the case that I'm FI NE, but I'm basically the most extroverted animal stack. Which so basically, because like, because technically you could say, oh, there's like there are types that are more balanced than other types, and I suppose mathematically you could say that's true. But you see, if like if you're like an FI NE, consume sleep, play last, it's like. Yeah, you've got like the stereotypical problems, but it's like, it's like, yeah, at least you understand it. Like you don't have like extra problems where it's like, if you're like a consume, play, blast, sleep, like sure you make your function maybe more balanced, but the problem is that you've, you've now got like EP problems to deal with as, as, as well as IP problems. Like if you're, if you're like a consume, sleep, play, blast, you've got, um, you have, you do, you, you, you've got like stronger IP problems to deal with. Like you've got like a stronger love, hate relationship with a tribe. But the like the EP problems are like more minimum, or or like yeah, I actually I don't even know if the consumes they play fast. Are they yeah, they're, they're the sort of EP IPs, but um, 
yeah the, the, it's kind of like the, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like the, 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 like discriminate on anyone's problems that like that's subjective to everyone and I'm not like I'm not trying to you know do anything I'm not trying to invalidate anyone um I think it's just uh I'm just because I'm just trying to sort of rationalize everything it's like if I'm like a consumed play blast sleep INFP then I've got like maybe my IP problems are technically weaker but then there's also this weird thing of ep problems that are like basically are the same as the ip problems so i'm not really too sure yeah well i know you said that you know you don't want to say that one problem is better than the other problem whatever <laughs> i'm sorry but it's okay but uh i actually think that designers have it worse than, than, <laughs> than observers <laughs> yeah because if our problem are things, it's not so bad, really. It's like a physical, like it's a, it's a thing. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, like it's, 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 it's like, it's like something within our control to fix, but like people is something that you cannot really control. It's like hard. And, <laughs> and people is like, so like the fact that I'm a double designer, I'm like, okay, people are easy. I'm like, sweet, sweet. You know, I'm like, this is, if, if the worst, if my worst problem is like something, <laughs> oh, sure <laughs> i'll take that you know so i'm like you know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i get it but then it's like but then the problem is like if you're an ep and it's like your problem is a thing it's like okay i've got that in my control but eps have the aren't they, aren't they supposed to have like the least control of all like the mbti types or yeah no it, you're right you're right but at the same time it's also your attitude towards your animals and your functions right so if uh let's say for me I like my demons. So I have a, I have a positive attitude towards my demons and I actually yeah. like practicing them um, yeah. to my, to the best of my ability, of course. And I mean, it's not like I don't rage when I am practicing it. I, I do definitely pra- uh, rage when I do it, but then I'll catch myself in the middle of my rage. I'm like, ah, shit, this is just, not, this is not real. This is not real. This, this freak out is not real. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it's your uh, default programming. It's like, yeah. it's just get it done and uh, you'll, you'll be okay. And then usually yeah, it is okay. I'm like, okay, phew. Uh, even though like, I'm like, you know, I'm like flustered and, sh- and stuff, you know, <laughs> like after, yeah. after, yeah. So yeah. But then for people, I'm like, Ooh, geez, you know? Yeah. Cause I, cause I, w- I will, I will say though, like, um, I could also, I think, cons- I, I also, I have this theory that like, I think the reason why INFPs are kind of underrepresented in being interviewed by you is because little to none of them like reach out because they're too afraid to because you know the introversion and and people problems and all that kind of stuff but i feel like i was able to reach out because i'm like the most extroverted kind of because i because yeah. i think because i think like a lot of like a really introvert like sleep consumed blast place like oh yeah they'll message me it's fine you know whereas like where, whereas like i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna message kendrick i mean like yeah because it's like i like I, I don't care if I get rejected or not, <laughs> like that yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think I really reject people. Oh, so. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but, uh, I'm yeah, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've messaged the sleep, cons- the sleep first INFPs. They, they just like run away from the interviews. Uh, they, they'll, <laughs> they'll talk to me on Facebook and they'll chat with me, but they don't want to go on camera and like, you know, have a, have a, have a recorded chat for some reason that's for scary to them but on facebook yeah, they'll talk to me all the time i'm like okay oh, i still don't have a yeah. still don't have a sleep first INFP. still don't exist uh but yeah, hey think- for, for you you're the first male INFP. so i'm like sweet this is like <laughs> yeah I think, cool. yeah i think it might because i think it might be i here's what's probably going on in like this in like the sleep types and probably the sleep INFPs as well it's like they're probably afraid to go on camera for, for fear of being de- actually, Oh, sleep dis like, especially sleep deciders. They're probably afraid to go on camera to, in- to be interviewed by you for fear of being judged. Well, but then it's like, if the sleep, cause the sleeps will be hearing me and the sleeps are hearing my sleep low. And they're probably thinking, Oh, the way he's smiling during this, this entire interview. Oh, the way he started up this interview. Oh, like this all going on with this, this sleep right. process. He's just watching this. So they're judging you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really messed up, you know, because like, you know, as, 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 as deciders are scared of judgment and, but then they're judging other people. And then I'm like, I'm like, like, come on, come on. Like, if you don't want to get judged, then don't judge other people. You know, like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's that simple. Like double deciders, it's, it's like, they, they're not judgmental for some reason. Like, I, I think one of the, my biggest surprise in my life is like, 
how IJs are not as judgmental as they seem. I, I know they're like supposed to be like a judging type, but they're more judgmental with the thing, not with the people. Like they don't yeah. really care about your life choices as long as you're like causing chaos. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, for them. And it's, it, you know, so, uh, so yeah, that's definitely interesting. Uh, so you you pretty much covered tea already. Uh, I know we were going to talk. I, I didn't, I don't have to ask you about that since you already kind of went a, a, a tea. A tea yeah, ask more if you want. It's okay. Uh, I will, I will, but uh, I think I'll ask you more in the animal, the animal thing. So let's let's go back to okay. Since you're talking about tea, right? Let's talk about the animal. So let's talk about play. Your play is NT. It's a uh, figure figuring things out, solving a puzzle. Mm-hmm. You have in a savior state, and you like to do it with people. So talk about like working with people, problem solving with people. Do you enjoy that? Is that something that you enjoy? Um, from a work from a work perspective, I suppose since it's NT, you know, or um, there. Well, actually, I was recently training a guy on like how to lock up, um, like how to lock up, like, for example, our workplace. And I was having like a blast doing that because like it was because basically it's like because I knew what I was doing. The only reason why I was having a blast because I knew what I was doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's kind of a case where um I was like, I, I saw, I probably, to this, like, this guy was probably, like, either asleep for first or a consumed sleep, like, definitely, um, where it's, like, I probably came across as, like, very charis- charismatic to him, um, like, I think I do actually, like, I suppose, well, I mean, it depends on the, like, the size of the problem, like, but, but I, I do enjoy it, though, but, no, and especially, like, when, when, like, we're talking about MBTI problems, like, yeah, I'm going to, like, play on that, um, also, I'm going to throw a lot of OPS puns, and I'm not sorry. So, um, I yeah, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's I do, I, I think I do enjoy working through problem, problems with people. Uh, but it's like, I suppose it depends on on like, it does depend on the problem though. Actually, not actually now to say it though, I think the I probably do prefer to work because like. As you were saying before, like the having the problems with things over the problems with people, like yeah, I could totally because like people are kind of like a more comp like things are complex, but also people might even might actually even be more complex. The thing, well, I'm, I mean, I know no, actually no, I take that back. It depends on really how you look at it. Um, um, so it like when it comes to solving problems, yeah, I do enjoy solving problems. And do I enjoy solving problems with people? Yeah, it, it, like it. It depends on the on what the problem is and the size of the problem. Like, because I always, because it always makes me feel good when I, when like when I feel like I know what I'm doing. Because because there have been like because in most problems I don't know what I'm doing, but I kind of like want to see like I want to like seem like either I do know what I'm doing, or, or if I actually don't know what I'm doing, then I'll, I'll like try still try to be engaged. But it, it depends on, and if the but uh, it depends on the problem. And if the problem is boring, then like, I don't know. <laughs> no, of course you have to like the the problem, but uh, but anyways, yeah. you, so you have because you because of your TE, a lot of people that are the IP type that are like INFP or ISFP, they do like to connect with other people through work, you know. So it's, mm. it's uh, so that's like the the thing I'm trying to get at. Oh, okay. Like, like, how do you? Is that something that is important to you? I mean, you're pretty young, but like as you get older, I, I I'm I'm gonna guess that. If the math is correct, that connecting true work is something that's gonna be valuable to be to you, um, you know, moving um, forward. It's yeah, I think well, it's kind of a weird thing. It's it's kind of a weird thing with me because like net for me, networking is actually hard. Um, it's it's like, but, but at the same time, I see the value in it to the point where I'll where I'll still engage in it. So like for, like for example the, the whole like because like, sometimes I think oh man I'm gonna have to network with so many people oh because like you know I'm like a folk singer songwriter like I'm a musician and it's like oh man I'm gonna have to know so many people I'm gonna have to network but it's like I complain about it because like like it's it is probably like a hard because like, I think I think I just complain about it just because I don't really know where to start so it's like oh you know when's it gonna happen and oh will I be good at doing it and all that kind of stuff but at the same time I I know the value in it to the point where I'll just do it anyway networking in the sense of like you know if there's any activities going on in my college for example because like I'm in a private music college and I try to engage in like 
the activities there as long as like you know i don't feel like too disconnected from them or it's like as if i if i'm just like in the mood i'm like okay you know what i'll just i'll just go to it. so it's like i understand the importance of it um i do i still complain about i like i don't because i think networking is a very good thing and it's a very important thing to develop one's career i still complain about it though because it's hard but um um I see, I do, I do definitely see the value in it though, to the point where I am definitely willing to engage with it to the extent that I can. All right. Uh, gonna switch now to sleep. This is your, uh, weakest animal, mm. um, I, which is ironic because sleep is a, is an IP animal. Uh, yeah. let's cover some of the basis of sleep, um, SF sleep. So we both share, we're both sleep last, so it's gonna be very interesting. Mm. Uh, yeah. that's, a, that's the one thing we both share. <laughs> um, <so, laughs> First part of sleep loss is not taking care of your body. Um, oh yeah. So talk about like not taking care of your health and body and yeah, you know, like wh- what, what, what are some issues that you've had with with that? Junk food. I just I just eat for pleasure. Also, if we're being literal as well, bad sleep schedule. Like I actually mentioned in my typing video that the previous night I slept from eight till four, like eight a.m. until four p.m and just eating like yeah just a junk food diet but but but, um i mean not totally like my dad cooks cooks me uh food which is probably like the saving grace at this point in my diet but um how i think like what's actually funny was that um um, actually do you know what would i be able to i actually would i be able to read out a, th- a thing i type regarding like why i'm sleep last Cause like i said yeah i sent this in in a in like my there's there's a discord server that i'm in it's not like i'm not in a uh it, yeah it wasn't in an ops discord server i'm gonna have to find this there's, there's like a certain channel that we have regarding personality now this should be some this should be somewhere did i put it in here yeah i should have did I? Oh damn! Where, where is it? Um, but yeah, like basically, um, what I said was, um, oh here we go. Okay, this is what I said. Uh, number one, my girlfriend has to keep telling me to put in my earphones every time we talk. This indicates demon sleep due to lack of processing the, the pattern that keeps happening at the start of our calls. That's true. So because basically every time I'm joining a call with like my girlfriend, it's like she's like. John, put in your headphones, put in your headphones. I don't, want to, I don't want to keep asking you this every call, put in your headphones. And it's like, oh, okay. oh man, I'm so sorry. Next call, I still forget. Um, number two, um, actually, wait, let's see. Oh yeah, oh, this goes into, um, yeah, this actually goes into, what was it? Oh yeah, the May 12th anxiety attack came out of nowhere, building up over time until it exploded. This indicates demon sleep because I did not take the time to sit down and process my emotions and thoughts. This is a very interesting story. And I think this can actually indicate a good this is the demon sleep, basically. So at the start of the year, um, and this actually goes back to like when I said this year was a bad year, I'll tell you, this is, this is where it comes from. So back in like a journey of this year, I was doing, so I've been doing online college from, for the academic year from 2020 to 2021 due to COVID. And looking back, it was a terrible choice. I should have taken a gap year and I'm repeating first year as a result of that, but um, that's where we're at. So in January, 2021, feeling pretty disengaged with um, online college. I mean, I mean, that, that was like a, it was, it, that was a partial influence, but it was still kind of like building, building. It wasn't like the main influence. The main influence was that I've been in a long distance relationship for four and a half years. My girlfriend sort of started building this plan of, you know, how she's going to move out. And she's like, I think she's like hoping to move out by like the, like sometime next year, maybe. I mean, it might, might not happen next year, but like she, she still had the plan. Like, you know, she's going to live in like one of her friend's house. So, um, because, so because I thought that was like such a good plan and because I was getting, getting very disengaged in online college, um I had this plan of dropping out and so and I actually did it, it even came to a point where they actually sent me an email saying oh this is to confirm that you've dropped out but then not long after that I literally like it was like around I like 
I went to sleep on May 11th, just like calling my girlfriend saying, oh, shoot, I don't think I made a good decision here. Then it, I, I didn't go away. I woke up on May 12th. And I usually say it's like May 12th is like where this begins. I like, I felt like I was w- waking up basically like crying with anxiety, thinking that I literally made like one of the worst decisions of my entire life. Literally thinking, oh my God, I am not ready for the real world. I am not ready to put, put myself out there in the dirt because I had this idea that I would just basically um like i had this idea where i would just go to america do the gary v grind and just as like dave and shan say just like throw shit at a wall until it sticks so i had that that was my plan but um the problem was that when it actually came to like the reality of the situation and not just just that but like because i'm in ireland and she was all the way in america i would also have to um like get like like get documents for like the k1 visa so i'd have to get documents like for example medical records police records um all these kind of like you know records that you know i i don't know i don't i still don't know what documents need and then i was looking at things like for example because i never heard of like the selective service system until then it's like oh no that stops until you're 26 and all that kind of stuff and freaking out about all of the details that I missed out on and freaking out about how I planned this thing, which I thought was like basically foolproof in my head. There's no way this can go wrong, except I just felt like I wasn't ready to make the move. And that kind of decision where it's like, okay, I've been in a long distance relationship for like four years now. And I have to either stay in college for the next four years to make it an eight year long distance relationship or leave college with no degree, but I still have a diploma, but like no bachelor's degree and sort of throw myself out there into the dirt, like high risk, high reward kind of situation and being stuck in that sort of paralysis and also having to catch up on on like five assignments because I slacked off at like near towards the end of the year. All of that was absolutely overwhelming. And I would not have put that on anyone. It was torture. It was, it was, it was so rough. Um, I think ever, like ever since starting back in college, I think it's been a little bit, it's been a little bit easier, but it's kind of at the same time, I kind of has felt like that there's been like this sort of like darkness been going on in my chest for like the past, maybe like, how many, how many? they're like nearly like five months of this at this point. And, um, yeah it's it's I and I think it's just because like if I had sort of I suppose sat down and meditated and like if I did like if I wrote in my like journal all the time and I sort of if I look so I suppose like if I looked after like my exercise and all that kind of stuff then maybe like maybe I could have become made a much more self-aware decision um it was absolute like it was I was in so much pain because I didn't want to leave my girlfriend for next uh, another four years and maybe maybe I won't maybe I'll end up just leaving but then like I saw the other then I saw the other pain of like oh god I'm gonna have to actually work and I'm going to have to go through the dirt I'm going to and you know what if it fails what if what if I have to fly back what if it you know what if I make the wrong decision and all that kind of stuff and it was so it was like it, it was almost like a kind of pick your poison situation and it was it was one of the roughest periods of my life quite frankly and I, I, am i still going through it i don't it's not as bad it's not as bad now especially that now i'm like still in still in college but it's sort of it's kind of like sort of what's been kind of asleep is kind of like lurking in the back of my mind the sleep that i feel like i know i need to do so because there's base there's there's four domains of health as i see it there's the diet the sleep the exercise and the mindfulness these are like now what's weird is like my dad is like oh mindfulness is a bunch of mumbo jumbo but no it's not mindfulness is one of the absolute four most in, in my opinion the four most important things with regarding health if you don't look after your mindness you're not everything else is going to fall apart if you don't look after one, one of these four things everything else is going to fall fall apart like the reason why i'm not i'm not saying the reason mental health is a very complicated thing but like the, or the reason why like so for example a lot of like otherwise healthy people could slip into damaging states mental states of being is because they're not practicing enough mindfulness they're not practicing meditation they're not practicing writing in their journal daily reflecting on their feelings reflecting on their thoughts and all that kind of stuff and i i'm, I'm guilty of this 
And I know that I need, I know I need to eat better. I know I need to exercise every day. I know I still need to, I, I need to clean up my room. I know I still need to, there's all these things I need to do. Probably, uh, I should probably buy my, like, well, yeah, I should buy my birth certificate as well. Cause I'll have to like, you know, cause it's, it's, it's also that, that sleep thing of getting all the documents, collecting all the documents, getting all the specific details, right. And just like now it's narrowing on, on, on that sensory, on narrowing on the reality and the specific detail. That's really hard for me. And it's, 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 it's harder for me because I'm a consumed play glass sleep by NFB. Um, no, no, it's consume. Yeah. No consume play glass sleep. Yeah. And, um, it's sometimes it's kind of weird. Sometimes I fantasize myself just be, being in a continuous demon state, just not consuming, not playing. All I'm doing is blasting and sleeping or no sleeping and blasting. That's what all I'm doing. It's going to be the like, I'm just, I'm just never in a savior state. Just, and in fact, actually, maybe I was, I kind of felt, I was actually re, really experiencing that for, I'd say, a month, like from May to June. I wasn't myself. I, I even broke down to my girlfriend at one point, just crying, saying, I haven't been myself this past month. Just basically wor worrying about my future, not focusing on the present and like still, and I still actually procrastinate my assignments. And so that's why I have to repeat uh first year but um i know the stuff i need to do is whether I, it's whether i actually act and like you know i have all these like ideas of oh yeah you know i oh i start a youtube channel i i start i talk about mbti i start an mbt it's because it's like it's a harrowing thing to really figure out that your parents don't really know what's best for you because like you know they know what's best for you when you're a ch well not, not maybe not when you're a child but like you know because when you're a child like you mainly look towards your parents for protection and support. Then when you're like a teenager, you start to group off, like you start to move away from that. But then like when you're an adult, you sort of get into your life purpose. You sort of start to understand, okay, like I need to move away, you know, you need to move away from the bird's nest. And then if, but if you're still too attached to the bird's nest, it's like your parents are going to start saying, like they're going to start acting like parents and they're going to start saying things that contradict your goals. And then you're going to come to that harrowing conclusion. Oh no, maybe my family don't actually know what's best for me. And all they're really doing is giving me like moral support and cookies and all that kind of stuff. And, um, it's, yeah, it's quite harrowing. Um, but it's, it's, it's like, I think it's just, you have to like that. The, one of the scariest things about life is that you have to take those like random shots in the dark, knowing if they'll hit or not. Like you have to, um, you have like you have to do those weird things where like your family be like no don't do that where your friends be like no don't do that and you just have got and maybe even you won't have full confidence in it but just something about it like your intuition or your gut is like maybe you should you should probably do this or you should do this and so i think maybe that's what life is all about just like being brave enough to take those random shots in the dark just not even knowing if it's going to work out or not and that's the, that's probably like the scariest thing in life for me it's like to actually take that that weird leap of faith because like because that's that's probably why maybe i sometimes have decision paralysis because it's like will like because because sometimes like maybe i will like make a decision and forget the details of, of a certain something or maybe it's, or maybe maybe this is where like the, my the tribe hate comes in it's like maybe i'll make a decision and the tribe is like no 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 and you know that in fact I remember actually, uh, I went out today. I went out like, and uh, my dad was like, okay, be back here by like a, a quarter past six. And I suppose this is where my tribe sensitivity comes in because I knew I wouldn't make it back uh, by, ha by quarter past six. I literally got myself like a freaking taxi, paid like 20 something euro for that. 20, yeah. And um, just, it, just because my, my, my fear of, him being angry at me but the fear of like not keeping my word more more of the fear of like him being angry at me and being all fussy it's it is like a real people problem but um yeah but it's but ultimately it's, it's something deeper than that it's like time management and time management throughout all my life has been very hard for me and i suppose i'll be able to better manage that time if i was um if i actually like did the sleep processing of like writing everything down 
and sitting there and being in the dirt. That's what the dirt's really about. It's being in like uncomfortable positions, knowing like, but here's the thing. What's, what's so weird is that you've got to like, you may not even know, like, what's the point in this? What's the point of me write, writing down like all these kind of notes? What's like, what's the point? I don't even want to do this. It doesn't even feel good. You're, like you've sort of got to like, like, for example, my, my dad is like, oh, John, you, sh you should bring two new shirts into work. They're like very smelly. And it's like, go away. I don't want your stupid administration concept. Go away. I don't want that. Leave me alone. But I sort of, I know I didn't say that to him. That was going on in my mind because I, I used to get into like a lot of bad arguments with my parents because they would say something and I disagree with it. And I like, I would just, now I just don't get into arguments anymore just because quite frankly, like it's just not worth, unless they're re and I feel like they're really wrong about something, in which case I'm pointing out, but most of the time I just, I just don't anymore. Cause I used to just, I used to just start arguments just because like, like there, there was something, there was something they might have said it might have been small and then I would have like hammered them for it but um and I might have been wrong that's the thing but um it's really because I, I suppose it's like when you're in like a sort of comfort zone like I am or if you're in like a comfort zone in general and you don't want to like well it's not that you don't want to push yourself it's like you know you need to push yourself in another way but you're sort of kind of like negotiating with yourself it's like Oh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it next week. Oh, you know, I've got this, I've got this meeting. I need, do I need to do this business thing? I need to finish that, uh, that task. But it's like, you know, it's like, what would it take for you to, because a lot of problems in my life, like usually, and this is, I know this is a very sleep last thing. Um, a lot of problems, I usually have never dealt with problems in my life until they actually started affecting me. And once, because like, it's like, you know, because like, for example, I've got a wisdom tooth up here. I was like, you know, I don't even think about my wisdom tooth ever, but it's like, until it actually starts getting bad, which is like this, the, the demon sleep, then I'll actually go fix it. It's like, the, what sleep is really about is you fix these problems before they start getting bad. And it's all about the, er like, the like, I suppose like the earlier you fix problems, the better, because it's like, there's this, there's this thing in my mind, and maybe it's the any, I don't know, but it's like, there's this sort of weird thing where it's like i don't want there to be an, a pessimistic end to anything i want to be purely optimistic but it's like the probably like in certain roles in life there probably are like like you know because people are like oh you should invest early in life in your finances because the earlier you invested the better and then it's like you know but like what if you're like too i don't know what if you're like too depressed to invest early and then all the years go by and then all of a sudden you're like a certain age where it's like, oh no, now I'm depressed because I could have invested earlier. Now you're more depressed and now you're not investing even more. And then it's like, that's why the present is so important. That's why the now is so important. And it's just, it's, I, th I think it's just, yeah, it's really, really important to understand that the only, the only thing that exists in life right now is, is right now. It's, because what's what's happening right now is like the past technically doesn't exist because the past is not happening the past happened in the past but it's not real the only the only thing that could be real in the past is the is the indicators that the present gives off but you've but you've got to be mindful of the present how to deal with that in the present moment the future doesn't exist because the future is building itself on the present like my dad was like trying to make some kind of argument saying oh the present does technically doesn't exist he was like some kind of metaphysical argument and uh, but he doesn't get the point and this is probably why he's saying all oh, mindfulness is a bunch of mojo or whatever it's like the present is the absolute most important thing and this is this is what like all the gurus and like all that they'll, they'll say all this kind of stuff like the present is the absolute most important thing because so if you're if you're worried about the future if you're worried about the past it's mental degeneration and it's like i've always i suppose like I've always wanted to approach life optimistically and I am an optimist, but it's like, take something as simple as like, not like aging now, actually, well, no, aging is quite complex, but like, think about something which, uh, which seems simple, but is complex, like aging, like, you know, as you get older, like your body, like basically, did you like, depending on your levels of health, which is why health is so, so, so important, depending on your physical, mental and spiritual health, like, like with most, with most people, the body like declines. The, the skin just like, you know, just getting soggy, you know, your, up, your upper parts just start trembling, your hearing decreases, your sight decreases. And 
And then like, you know, you're with your, you're with your partner knowing that they're degenerating, they might even be degenerating faster than you. And then it comes to a point where it's like, oh crap, we don't have much time left. Then the only, then the most important thing is our company. That's, that's the, so like, you know, you're both like, I don't know what, 86, 96 or something. No, you, you, like, there's always time in the present. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, but when you, like, when you get older and, when, and you know, like, you know, you start re- like when your body has like barely energy, barely any energy left. Cause like one of my biggest fears in my life is me growing up to a certain like age. And I sort of look back at my life and I think to myself, Oh man, like I didn't, t- I didn't take advantage of that opportunity. Like, Oh man, I didn't, I didn't do this thing. I didn't do that thing. I could have done this thing. I could have done like the should have, would have, could have, all that kind of stuff. And I suppose I'm like, I'm one of the things I'm absolutely worried about is just having time just pass me by and I don't engage with it. Time passing, like time passing by and me not being conscious, not being mindful of what I have around me and what I can do. And the years just go by and just, I just live in mediocrity for the rest of my life. And I just become like a sad and miserable old man who, who never closes the long distance gap with his girlfriend and just lives in some, instead of being a, 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 like an inspiring musician to people, he's just working in some dead end job because he didn't actually put in the work. He wasn't, he was like basically, I don't know, the bit like he, he, he too afraid or whatever, it's like the doubt. Cause just, just looking back in your life and it's like, oh no. Like I could have done nothing because basically now my body has little, has like little to no energy left. But I, what I will never submit to is pessimism. I will never submit to pessimism. Those kind of people where it's like, oh, my life is going to be bad for the rest of my life. I'm going to die at, at 50. Oh, oh, everything's terrible. I'm, I am not, I am not those people. I will never be those people. I'm all, I, I, the closest I will be to that is realistic, but I will never be pessimistic. Never. I'll only be, I'll only be optimistic and realistic. It's important to balance the two. Um, but yeah, I think aging is like one of those concepts where it's like, you know, something like does come to an end. Like death is like the ultimate end of, of, of humanity. Like there, there's an end. There's this realistic end because pessimism is not realistic, but there's a realistic end. There's like a, there's like, everyone has a death date or like you could say an expiration date if you wanted to be funny. But um um yeah the it's just one of those things where i've always wanted to like be like like have that sort of ch- I, I still have the childlike optimism but I, sp- I suppose sometimes maybe i'm too optimistic maybe i can like my sort of judgment can be clouded in a way but yeah there's my there's my very philosophical rant or ta- not rant tangent yeah man you went from uh you went from your SF sleep and then you went to NF, NF <laughs> concepts. I don't know how you, switch, I don't know how you switched there, but you you did it. Um, all right, dude. Um, uh, last two questions and we'll wrap up the interview. All right. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, first one is um. Okay, so you kind of answered it already. So you had your masculine <laughs> NE that uh, concepts that you uh, were sharing uh, just very strongly just now. So you kind of, yeah, you talked about your masculine any already. And then you also talk about your feminine SI, uh, you know, like at the start of your, uh, your little thing there earlier. So like, you know, with paperwork and stuff. So like, you know, coming to America and, and whatnot. So, so you kind of covered your, you know, the struggles with the feminine SI already. So the, the, the only thing that we haven't covered yet is uh, NF consume, uh, the consume part, especially. So there's two components to it that I'd like to ask you. Uh, first one is gathering information. Well, you kind of talked about this already. So you've, you've talked about gathering information that is more like conceptual. So the, the only aspect of it that you haven't covered is self-awareness, but from an outside perspective. So you have consumed first. That means you are self-aware of yourself, but like it's as if like you left your body like a ghost and then you can see yourself from an outside perspective. So um, just briefly talk about that. And then, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually a very interesting way to put it because it's like, like, say for example, when I'm like, like when I'm like putting on certain clothes, it's like, it's like, you see, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really, maybe, maybe sometimes I'm aware about what people are thinking, but it's like, you know, 
Like for example, I could put on my, my jean jacket and my jeans and I'd be like, yeah, this looks cool on me. And yeah, I look cool right now. Like it's, it is that kind of thing. Or it's like, I'm aware of like, I'm, I am sort of aware of how I like come across other people, but at the same time, I also have the attitude of like, I don't care as well. So, um, um, yeah, it is, it, it's like, I do have that kind of awareness of where like, um, I, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to sleep process this. <laughs> yeah, um, I do, I am, like, there's not, a, there's, there's not really a time where I'm not aware of how, of how like, I come across to people. Well, I mean, I mean, well, I'm talking about physically. I mean, I, 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 like, I suppose it is because I am, I am a decider. It's like, I'm, I'm able to sort of present my, myself in a way that is presentable, but like, at the same time, it's also kind of balanced with like, you know, I do it my own way, whether it's slovenly or stylish. Um, sometimes I like to go with stylish. Sometimes when I don't care, I'd like to go slovenly, but it's like, it's like, yeah, I am sort of kind of conscious of how other people can perceive me, but it's like, it's also balanced with like, I don't care. It's, 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 a, it's that very like sort of interesting, like common. And then did you say that was like part of, did you say that was part of play or something like that? Consume. Consume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you're consuming yourself essentially. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that is basically, that, that's actually like, that's actually really interesting because I remember when I had like this, my first ever, you could like, this is actually quite spiritual for me. Like it, you wouldn't think this would be spiritual, but it was spiritual for you. Like when I was like a 12 year old, I just, I, I had just turned 12 when like Michael Jackson died. And that was like a sort of transformation for me. Cause that was sort of the start of when like, like now I wasn't thinking to, to 12 year old me, Oh, you know, well, actually I kind of was, but I wasn't thinking about it seriously. Like for example, like Michael Jackson, I only discovered his music when he died as a 12 year old, but the, but his iconic status and his music and the, the cultural impact that he had like affected me so much. Like I wanted to like be Michael Jackson. I remember even thinking as a 12 year old, like I would like try to adopt his mannerisms and I'd like, you know, anything that I saw, like he, I idolized Michael Jackson as if he was like a god or something. Um, I'm not really that, I'm not that, I'm not that obsessive anymore. I don't treat people to that degree. It's now, it is kind of like sort of much more subtle. It's like, yeah, I may hear a musician when they die and I may still like their music and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, it's, it's not like I idolize them or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's a kind of, yeah, it is, it's a really, it's a really interesting thing actually, because it's like, yeah, I'm looking at myself through consume and I look really cool. It's, it is that kind of uh, thing. And um, yeah, I mean, cause, cause I suppose, cause like I, I know that like, for example, I have my jean, like my jean jacket on and I look so cool with my jean jacket. And yeah, well, that, that's how I uh, portray it anyway. That's cool, man. Uh, that's interesting how you tunnel vision on Michael Jackson uh, as, a kid, as, yeah. as a teen. Um, I think I'm more surprised that he's double masculine, if anything. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, I guess he was sleep first, right? So he's putting that double feminine part first. That's why he came across double feminine, because the double feminine sleep. So it's it's interesting, whatever you put first is what you come mm -hmm. across as. Um, yeah. All right, dude, um, do you have any questions for me before we wrap up this interview? Any last minute um, <laughs> Maybe this, maybe... Um... How do I how do I SF sleep as a as a double feminine FINE consume plane blast sleep? How do I SF sleep? Yeah, um, well, SF sleep is uh, self awareness essentially, but from within. So you know, mm. consume is self awareness from external, externally. Mm. So you need both. Um, otherwise, you only have half of self awareness. So for you, you have half, which is the external. <laughs> the internal is what you. Yeah. Are struggling with um mm. there's there's several components to sleep uh one of them is setting boundaries with other people um you're an ip so that's not going to be the hardest thing to do in the world mm. um yeah. you've kind of talked about it already so it would be the other aspect that you would have issues with so the first one would be processing um your thought your feelings essentially um and how you feel about events that has already come to pass and uh, making a decision based on those past events, based on how they made you feel. Mm. Um, like for example, I hang out with a certain friend 
who I noticed that when I do hang out with him, I feel kind of dirty afterwards. So yeah. So I, I like the friend, but I realize that spending time with him too much is toxic. So I just put the uh, par- parameters around that. So for me, it's like once a month is good enough. There you go. So yeah. you know, or like uh, uh, you know, just with other people that I know that when I spend time with them, they have a tendency to flake on plans without giving a heads up. So for mm-hmm. those people. I give, I put, I make, uh, I, I set a one year ban on them. So I don't talk to them for one year until they learn their lesson. Right. You know? So, you know, it's, it's like, so it's, it's like, it's like how past events made you feel and like make a decision based on, on that. But okay. it, from my personal experience, that the fastest way to get to sleep, to SF sleep is to have really messed up ex- life experience, like really dark, <laughs> messed up life experience because it's almost like PTSD. Like you can't unlook at it. Like it's so messed yeah. up. It's so messed yeah, up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's happened to me throughout the past like five months. It's like, I'm, I'm, it's like an itch that I feel like I need to scratch. It's like, because beforehand, like even a year ago or earlier this year, like I could just look away from it. But now it's just like, I, like it's there. Like, yeah, it has to be a black hole essentially. I, I know you were saying about being optimistic earlier, but as a sleep last person, the older I get, the more I realize that negativity is the answer i know it's i know it sounds kind of messed up but uh yeah. but yeah. but that negative life experience is actually the black hole use- it's a black hole that sucks me into my sleep and allows me to process things and the more i had of it i don't know if you watch anime i don't know if you've seen uh, dragon ball um, um no, i haven't okay okay well i can't use the analogy then but uh, okay i'll, I'll just uh, use the analogy so in, in that in that cartoon basically when when they get hurt badly <laughs> they get stronger later on when after they recover so it's it's pretty much that like it's like uh, do you lift weights have you lifted weights oh i've i've done it before not not consistently but i've definitely done it before but yeah you, you know when you lift weights you get sore afterwards right yeah then that's the true next, then the next time you go back to the gym you're like stronger you know so yeah. you're you have to break the muscle essentially and then you it gets repaired um mm. and, then, and then when it gets repaired it's stronger so i, I that's yeah. that's kind of how i see it it's like every time you get beaten up in life you come out of it stronger um especially if you have a positive attitude so i'm talking about attitude here i'm not i'm not against negative experience but negative experience plus positive attitude i think is the the ma- the magical combination you know yeah uh, absolutely yeah because you can't have a positive attitude and uh just positive experience you know you're not gonna learn yeah. anything. <laughs> you're just gonna live in like half of real life and real yeah. life is not all light it's light and dark yeah. right so and then you also I, I i noticed too like this this might help you more too as well uh, as an ip it's like negative experience also means a higher level of empathy for other people because oh, yeah. we don't have fe right so we cannot fake sympathy to other people especially <laughs> if you've never experienced it firsthand but if you're the kind of person that has experienced a lot of bad stuff then when something bad happens to someone, chances are you've experienced something similar and you can empathize with them and then yeah. you become a better human being, essentially. Um, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it, man. That's just... That's yeah. like that. All right, cool, dude. Um, so yeah, John, thanks for coming out and doing this interview. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah, and then, um, yeah. I mean, super late where you are right now. So, you know, yeah. I'm you're probably not going to sleep because I your sleep last, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, you know, have a good night. Anyway, regardless. Thank you. But, all right. Peace out. Peace out.